All right, today's video, we're going to be talking about styled components. Now, this is a way that you can create reusable components that have styling attached to them for your React apps. So stylecomponents.com, this is the website with the documentation for this, if you want to delve into it even deeper after this video. I have a starter bit of code here. There's a GitHub repo called React Styled Components. If you clone this, it's the main branch. I've got uh, Create React App is the app that I've run. And that has done the basic setup. Then I went in and I cleaned out um, all the parts that we don't need for this. Uh, so I've simplified it quite a bit. In the index.js file, we've got, basically we're loading app. And then in app, this is all that we've got. So just a little bit of JSX to render bare minimum content. So the first step that that we need to take after we've got this repo set up is we need to actually install styled components. So that's a simple install. npm install and styled components is the name of it. Once we have that in style, uh, installed, we can start using all the features. So there we go, we're done. And I'm gonna close, actually, I'm gonna start my React app running. So npm start. That's going to kick this off and it'll open up in the browser for us in just a moment. And there we go. So we've got the basic app up and running. Really doesn't have any content other than this, the div with this H1 element in it. So we're going to use header elements just to walk through and understand how style components work. So let's start with a very basic one. Um, we're going to style h1 elements and we're going to apply different types of styling to them and turn them into reusable components. Now I'm going to build a bunch of these components so I'm going to create another file. We're going to create a file called styled.js. The name itself doesn't matter. So just styled.js. This is just where I'm going to put all of my components that I'm going to create. All right and in styled we want to import the default which is called styled from styled components. This is what is going to allow us to build actual styled components. So take any HTML element, any JSX element component that you want, and from that you can build one that has styling applied that you can reuse throughout your application. So I'm going to build one called title, and we'll just say styled.h1, and then we add a template literal. So this is a tagged template literal. It's a function that runs on this string. So inside of here, I can define the CSS that I want to use. So I'm going to just say color Rebecca purple. Okay. Now I have created a styled component here that is going to take the H1 element and apply this to it. And it's going to be called title. So we have to export this so I can use it. I'll say export title. I don't have to say from where, just export title. That's what we're doing here. So back in app.js, we need to here import what we've just done. So we're going to import title from capital S styled.js. Oh, I should, uh, there we go. If we're not, um, for these imports, if you are dealing with something that is coming from node modules, you can use just the name. But once you're dealing with something of your own inside of here, you need to specify a path and the file extension as well. So dot slash, same folder, style.js, this is the file. So we're bringing that in from here. We have this component title that we're importing. Now I can use that just like this and There we go. So if I jump into the web page, there we go. Here is my title element. Now this is an H1 element, and it means that I could create a whole bunch of these. I can reuse it. And anywhere that I'm importing title, just like any other component that you would have in a React app, you can do that here as well. So I don't want to have a whole bunch of these. I'm going to do different components, but you can use these. All you have to do is import the component. Here we have a styled component 
called title, and I can use that anywhere in my app. Now, it doesn't have to be just one CSS property. I can have loads and loads and loads of properties in there too. All right, let's um, look at another thing that we can do with the styled component here. So I'm gonna create a new one called inverse title. And we're going to call styled like this. So instead of going to the H1 element, and this is the function that we're calling on this string, we're going to call styled directly, and we're going to pass in something that we've already built. So this title, I'm going to pass that in. That will create for me a copy of title, and then we're going to extend it. Same way we did with the original title. We're just going to add CSS properties inside of here. So let's just do the flip. We'll say background color is going to be Rebecca purple. And my color is going to be white. So we have inverse title. We can now export that. We can import it over here. And then use it as many times as we want. So inverse title is our second title element. And there we have it. So our title and our inverse title. And we've built components that are styled, hence the name styled components, that we can reuse throughout our application. Another cool thing about the styles that we put inside of here, these are sort of, if you've ever worked with SAS, these are SAS styled um, CSS blocks. So we can do things like this. I can say that when somebody hovers over whatever element I'm talking about here, I'm going to change the background color or I'm going to change some of the properties. So in this case here, what we're talking about is the title, the inverse title component. And if somebody hovers over whatever element we're talking about here, whatever component we're talking about, then this will also get applied. So this will build that styling for us. So inverse title, it's included in that. If I hover over, there we are. We can see that the color changes. So we've got a hover style applied to that. Okay, so we've got basic components where you specify what the JSX or HTML element is that you want to style and you build your new component, or you can pass one that you've built into the styled method, and then again, extend that with whatever styling that you want. We can start adding animations into this as well. So let's create an animation, call it uh, pulse. This uses a method from styled components called keyframes. Again, it's a tag template literal like this. So I'm going to have to come up here and import that. Now I said earlier, styled is the only default export from styled components. And that is still true. So that means when we import keyframes, we have to do it like this. So here's our default. And this is the additional thing that we're bringing in. Tag template literal as before. And we can define what our animation is going to be. So I'll say from opacity, let's say 10% to opacity of 100%. There we go, this is our animation. Now I'm going to build a component that uses this animation that we've created with keyframes. So I'll create a new one called animated title. And I'll pass in my inverse I could have defined a new one, but I'm going to use inverse title and just extend that one even further. So this is going to be an animated version of my inverse title that I defined up here. And the only property I'm going to add is just the animation one. We could add more. There's no limit on how much you can add, but I'm just going to, for this example, keep it short and simple. There we go. And right here, this is where I'm embedding inside this backtick character. The variable that I want to use is this one right here, pulse, the one that I defined the animation inside of. So we'll add pulse. Now we have to export animated title. 
save that. We'll come in here. We'll import it. And our third one is going to be the animated one. And there it is. So once a second, it's cycling through this animation between 10% and 100% opacity on that element. It, just like the inverse element that we had before, it is still importing that hover style as well. So we've extended the thing that has the hover style with this animation. Okay, now, what we've used so far, everything here has been a static property. Like we've just got a hard-coded value. So these are static values that we're using inside of all of these. We can also use dynamic values for these. So let's create one called dynamic title. And we'll go back to what we did originally, style.h1 with the back tick. So we're defining another component, looks just like the original title component, but I want to be able to dynamically change what the values are inside of here. I don't want them just hard coded. Let's say I want to set the color, I want to set the background color, and I want to set the font size. So these are my three CSS values that I'm going to set here. I'm going to export this as well. And the place that we're going to get our values from is going to be props. So here, when we add components, any props that we have inside of here, any attributes that you're adding into your JSX elements, those are going to be transferred down. So we're going to include dynamic title. And down here, we'll use dynamic title. And right here, if I add props, these become things that I'm passing down into that that will be used in the styling as it's created dynamically. So we could have a property called inverted. So let's do that one. Come back in here. And for our color, we'll say props.inverted. Sorry, props. And these all have to be functions, by the way. So it is a function that we write here that handles the props. So here's props being passed in to our function. And then we're checking if props.inverted. If that exists, yes. What do I want to do? Well, then I'm going to set black as my color. And if inverted is not, I'm going to use cornflower blue. So there we have our colors defined. And because this is an expression in JSX, or, or sorry, embedded inside of our tag template literal, our template literal string, we need to wrap the whole thing inside of the curly braces with the dollar sign in front. Same thing here. We're going to have an expression here, and we're going to have an expression here. And that is the end of our line. So each one of these props is going to be passed in, and we're going to be calling a function. Here, props is going to be passed in. We're going to be calling a function. Now, I could just hard code a return value. I could say font size is always going to be 2REM. And we could say background color is always going to be white. That's fine. We can do that. But I want to do something a little bit more useful with that. So here it is. The background is white, and it's black because inverse was defined or inverted rather was here. If I remove inverted from this, it's cornflower blue. So let's put it back and we'll do one with and one without. There we go. So one with the black, one with the cornflower blue. And we can do the same sort of thing inside of here. We can say, hey, if props.inverted exists, exists, if it's one of the props, if there's a prop called inverted, then what do we want to use? Well, for black, we'll use white. For cornflower blue, um, I don't know, let's uh, set it to red. And then down here, I'm going to use 2REM as my default font size, but I'll use something different if we've got a property inside of here. Let's call it size. So size. 
And you could create as many properties in here as you want. Size, color, inverted. And these values can be coming from props that are being passed into your component. They can come from state variables, whatever it is that you want to use. So there we are. I've got four REM set on this one. This one I don't have a size set. And so inside of here, if props.size exists, then props.size, that's the value that we're going to use, else we will use the two REM. Okay, and we'll save that, come to our page. There we go. So here's the one that is inverted. So we've got the black on the white, which isn't really inverted, but that's what we're setting it as. And then for the other one, we've got the blue with the red background and the 4REM size. If we change this and we add inverted in here, it's going to pick that up. So it's using the black on white with the 4REM size. If we take inverted out of here, we're back to using that default, that very hard to read default. Okay, so that is creating styled components. And there's one other thing that I want to throw in here, um, which can be quite useful when you are designing the styles for your site. Very often you want to have some global styles that are defined. So inside of here, some default global styles. So we're going to create another file in here. I'm going to call it global.js just to show you how to create some global styles. We're going to be importing from styled components. Again, there's another one. We need the curly braces because it is not the default export. Create global style from styled components. Inside of here, we're going to create something that we call a component that we're going to call global styles. And we're going to call that method that we imported here. Create global style. And again, it uses the back tick. Inside of here, we're going to define all of the CSS properties. Now, something I haven't mentioned up until this point, one of the other advantages of doing things this way, creating these styled components, you're thinking, okay, well, I can just create my own components and then put my CSS in there. Yeah, you can import a CSS file, you can use class names, or you can come into these elements and you can say, hey, style, and I create a style object, and then we use the JavaScript syntax. So it's a little bit more cumbersome putting them inside of here and or importing CSS and doing it that way. Here, we're creating all of our style components. We're putting in the styles to create those things. We know that props are being passed in. So there's going to be the, the children props are going to be automatically in there for us. And the global styles, this allows us to define global CSS. So let's just say we've got uh, margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing, border box. Okay, so just some basic CSS and then default styles for all H1 elements. So this is beyond the style components. This is sort of your default settings for everything. I can do stuff like this. We'll say, okay, for every H1 element, um, I'm going to set a border on the left-hand side, and it's going to be one REM solid black. I'll set margin left to one REM. Do the same thing with the padding. Okay. So there's some static properties. Now to use this global styles, we're going, we're exporting global styles. So we have to import that here. So we're going to import global styles. We didn't say default here. So I do need to wrap this in the curly braces. And that's coming from global.js. Okay, so we've brought that in. We haven't used that in our page yet, but we can anywhere we like. So I'm going to just inject it right here inside of the div that wraps everything. Global styles. There we go. I have now added that CSS that I've defined in here. Whatever CSS it is, that is now being applied to my site. And there we go. We have the border, the margin, the padding being applied to all of those title elements that we've added. 
Maybe there's something else that we want to apply in there. Maybe we want to do something dynamically. So what about the font weight? So we can check and see, okay, hey, is there a font weight? If there is a font weight, then that's the value that I'm going to use. And let's say by default, I want the weight to be 100. So down in my H1 elements, I will say font weight. And again, we use a function. So props gets passed into here while this is being created. And we can say, hey, if props dot weight, then we'll use props dot weight. Else, I'm going to set it to 900. And that is a default that will be applied to all of my H1 elements. So there we are. There's the 100 because we have uh, set weight up here inside of global styles. So this is the value being used. If this didn't exist, there we go. The 900 is the font weight being set on all these elements. All right. So that gives you a lot of stuff that you can do with style components, creating your own style components, setting the global styles, adding animations into them, extending them by calling the styled method and passing in the name of ones that you've already created. So a lot of stuff that you can do to really help yourself be more productive by creating these components and the styling in one place and then using those components with that default styling attached to them. All right. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. Um, I will be doing another video on theming with styled components. So watch for that coming soon. And as always, thanks for watching.